everyone, welcome to the Rosip Island Video Diaries for November 2021. My name is Hannah and you are joining me in my studio in northern Tasmania in Australia. I record these videos mostly about knitting, really, <laughs> anything that I have been knitting and planning to knit, dreaming about knitting and a little bit about my hand dyeing and my uh, hand dyeing business, Rosip Island. Thank you so much for taking some of your time to spend that with me. I really appreciate it. You can find me as Rosip Island on Instagram, Ravelry, there's a page from Facebook and what else? Oh, and then of course my, my web shop is rosipisland.com where you can find my hand dyed yarn. I'm sorry if I seem a bit off today because it is quite a dark, rainy afternoon here. I thought I'd try to have my phone, which I used to record my videos on, turn the other way around so that I, that I can't actually see myself because I know that you get a better quality video that way. And I thought if it is dark, maybe that would improve the quality a little bit. So this is the first time I'm recording it one of my videos without being able to see myself. So I'm sorry if I seem a bit off. That's the reason why. And uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> how it goes. I might not do it this way again. It might just be too um, weird, but we'll try it this time, you know, try everything once. So that's what we're doing. So we're here in my studio. I have a little bit of time today. It's Saturday afternoon. We've had a busy day. And my husband is taking care of dinner tonight. So I have um, an hour and a bit just to myself and um, spending it out here. And I thought it's about time that I record a little bit of a video about what I've been up to. Because even though life's busy at the moment, I do find time for knitting. Or I should say, I take time to do some knitting as well. So I have some things to show. To show to share with you, to show you. So basically my videos are a bit of a show and tell really. I just love to talk about knitting and this is my opportunity to do so. Um, do I have any updates since last time? Last time I recorded a video was the day before I was going to start a new job. And I'm now five weeks into that job, my new role in a new workplace, new people, everything, and it's going really well. I'm really happy where I am. I'm still learning and figuring things out, but I have not had any major disasters or met any people that I don't get along with. So I'm, I'm very happy and I'm starting to feel more confident and um, I'm really enjoying it. So that's going really well. It is a full-time position and um, Yes, it means that I've had less time for other things, but I'm sort of finding my, my balance. It will take a little bit of time, but it's, um, yes, it's going well so far, if anyone was curious. Um, and yes, I've, I've been knitting in my, um, my downtime, uh, in, in the evenings, and um, I have things to share with you, and that's really what I want to do in this video. So I'm going to put my tea down and get right into all the knitting content. I will start with letting you know that what I'm wearing, and I'm starting to feel a little bit hot actually, um, this is my um, Magnolia, which is a, a pattern by Camilla Vod, and I knit this in one strand of Holst Co's, I believe, a cotton and wool, light fingering weight yarn and I held it together with a mohair silk from Cola Girl Collective. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see and again I can't see what I'm actually showing you. The The commercial yarn is a grey yarn and then the indie dyed mohair silk is a variegated light pink mint and cream coloured. So there's a lot of um, changes in in color in this sort of mild fabric i really really enjoy the fabric i really enjoy how it fits over my shoulders the problem is 
if you, I won't stand up and show you, but you, most of you probably know what the magnolia looks like. It has a lace section down the bottom of the body. And that lace section on me just sort of goes out in an A-line. And it's not really a look that I feel comfortable in. So really, I would love this jumper if I could just cut off the lace um, and just wear it as a, a straight down jumper, I, I think. I'm not going to do that because you know, I'd rather niche myself a new jumper. This is this is really nice for wearing at home and it might be that it, it's suitable for some sort of um, outfits but for what I'm currently wearing mostly it doesn't really go too well. But I, I do really love the, the feel of it and um, yes, I, I love it all the way down to the lace section <laughs> and then not so much. Then I like it, not love it. But that's what I'm wearing and it's super comfortable and cozy. All right, I have finished a few um, small items. I, I have so many things on the go. I had a look, I, I log all my projects in Ravelry so I can keep an eye on <laughs> what I'm doing. So I don't forget project back somewhere with, with things that I'm working on. So I have um I have all my projects listed in projects listed in Ravelry. Sorry, I'm going to try to slow down. Um, and I had a look, and the other day I had ten listed projects ongoing. And normally I try to keep myself to one row that I can see in Ravelry, which is four to five projects depending on the device you're looking at. And I had two rows in there, ten projects. And yeah, that's a little bit too much, especially now when I don't actually have a lot of time <laughs> to knit. Um, but that's all right. It's just, I think with, with more, the more you have to do, the more stress you have, the more things you like to cast on because it just, it's, it's such a nice thing to do and you like to treat yourself to do that. So from all of those projects that I am currently working on, a few of them have been ongoing for some time and you have seen them before. But I have a few things that I've started and finished since I last recorded a video because I needed um, some presents. And um, I got uh, myself um, busy knitting up some things that I'm going to um, give away for a present. Um, I have knit this headband. This is uh, my modified version of headband with a twist by, have I written it down? Is it Mirella Moments or something like that? I normally put all the details on the screen. I have knitted this before. The first time I knitted, I follow the pattern, which have some sort of... Um, it's not a brioche, but it's not a regular rib. It's some sort of other more involved ribbing. But since that first time, now I just do a, a regular one by one rib. And then I, I use the pattern to do the twist at the front to sew it up. With this one, I used, let me see if I have the yarn here. I used the, a little bit of this skein, which is a linen and mohair. No, it's alpaca and linen and wool. It's from Rauma, a Norwegian company. I thought that this was black or grey charcoal, but it's actually very dark navy blue. But it looks mostly grey, depending on the light. And then I had some... <laughs> don't know why I did this but I was in spotlight getting some thread for sewing and I saw these skeins for two dollars each and um, normally I don't get much from spotlight in the yarn department because a lot of it is um, acrylic and with the actual nice um, well I shouldn't say nice I should say with the the all natural fiber yarn that they have a spotlight, I don't actually find it 
um, any more better deal than where I could get it anywhere else. So I normally don't buy it yarn there. But anyway, I saw this in the clearance bin for $2 each. And this is a 100% wool tweed yarn, Londra, Moda Vera Londra. And it's a sort of single ply tweedy grey. So I got what they had in that wool, which I think was five 50 gram skeins. So I had two, that, that's the fingering weight. So I held two strands of that fingering weight yarn together with one strand of the alpaca linen wool. And you can see in this yarn that it has like one strand of the linen and then has the other fiber going around it. So that made quite a wide headband and it, it's um, soft, but uh, definitely a bit rustic. So I, I made that one and then I wanted to make some mittens to go with it. And I had this skein in my stash that my mum gave me some time ago. It almost looks like it's a hand spun. It's a single ply red and gray. I have no idea what it actually is. It, it didn't have a tag. It's, I think it's 100% regular wool. I'm not sure. Um, and it's a little bit thick and thin. Quite rustic. I think it's a bit like um, Icelandic yarn, really. So I had a 100 gram skein of that, and I think it might have been a, a worsted weight. And um, using that um, tweed, fingering weight tweed, together with that red rustic single ply, I made a pair of mittens. And the pattern that I used are the World's Simplest Mittens by Tin Canits. And they came out like that. I really love how the colors mix in. How I get sort of more red bits and then more gray bits really really nice and these are also um they're quite thick i used the the world's simplest mittens by tin can knits uh, comes in all different sizes and there's um there's instructions for how to make them with fingering weight yarn i think dk weight yarn and chunky weight yarn yarn and for this i used the chunky weight um instructions so then when I have had made this set, I thought, oh, that's, you know, that's for pretty cold weather and it's not very soft. So I better make another, <laughs> another set. So then I made another one of the headbands and I thought I'll, I won't make it as wide. I'll make it a little bit thinner and I make it with softer wool. So now I have to try to remember what I used for this one. I used a light blue alpaca, like a soft alpaca fluffy um, yarn and a light gray mohair silk um, lace weight yarn. And then a DK weight Tasmanian Merino from White Gum Wool in the gray. And then a Bendigo Woolen Mills um, classic five ply that I dyed gray. So those four strands and yes, made this smaller headband with that. And then, and this is something I recently finished, so I don't even know if I can find it, but I wanted also to make a pair of thinner mittens. And if you have watched my videos before, or if you've followed me on Instagram, or Ravelry, um, you will have seen that I made a beanie out of this yarn um, first thing this year, I think. This is a skein of yarn from Skein, Australia. It's not a skein anymore, it's a small leftover. It's the April Skies colorway on the El Merino base. And I had quite a bit left over since I made my beanie. And I decided to make some more mittens and I've only just finished the knitting but I have to do all the weaving in events so these are my very funny looking 
mittens from the fingering weight instructions in the sim world's simplest mitts. So they were sort of meant to go with that. I don't know. They look funny. I used the small adult um, instructions, fingering weight yarn. I don't, I didn't do a gauge swatch or anything. They're quite sort of fitted, but left a bit of room for someone with longer hands. They're quite um, fitted, but I think you know, they will they, do the job of keeping your hands nice and warm when it's not super cold. So yes, I have made those two headbands and two pairs of mittens. And all of these projects were really quick to make, um, which is really good when you need to do presents. So they are things that I have finished since I last recorded the video. I definitely recommend both of these patterns. If I remember, I'll link them down below in the description box, something that I normally never do, but I might try to remember that this time. The headbands are super easy, you just need a long um, panel of rib and then seam them together for the twist. And yes, the world's simplest mitts is just such a, a great simple pattern. That's those. It's raining outside now. It's really, um, it's a really cozy afternoon, evening after a busy day. I'm happy that I, <laughs> I can sit here with my cup of tea, surrounded by all my knitting and all my yarn. I mm, hope it's cozy where you are. All right, let's um, move on to things that I'm currently working on. And yes, there's a few things. <laughs> I guess I have um, something that's half finished. <laughs> I think I had started these last time. These are a pair of rag rug socks. Again, I've modified the original pattern. It's a pattern by Vicky Vera. And um, I, it's basically um, striping to self-striping yarns or these sort of commercial fake um, ferrile pattern sock yarn. I am in this using a opal and a regia. The regia is one of those Arnen Carlos colorways, one of the first ones they did. And... One of them is an opal, I think it was called Acapulco, can't remember, and I don't know where I have the skeins now. But I've, I've striped those two to get this look sock, and um, I'm making this, these as a present for someone who wears out their socks um, easily, or... Maybe I should say, really enjoys the socks, wears them a lot and ends up with holes in them. So I was going to try to figure out a way to make socks that might last a little bit longer. I think using the, the commercial, stronger German sock yarn definitely will improve um, how long they'll last for. I don't know how. Uh, how much wear you can get out of them, but I also decided to do a reinforced heel. I found a pattern a while ago that has um, a method of using your two, dif two different strands of yarn to reinforce the heel and just under the heel and also the toe. It's inc it includes a bit of um, slip stitches and Nothing tricky, but it, it creates a, a thicker fabric in the toe and in the heel. Again, I'll 
try to remember to link it down below put it on the screen and also it's um, in Ravelry for this project the link to that um, pattern so I've created or I've knitted the first one of these and I have started on the second one somewhere here I have started the second one it's been uh, my work knitting now where I work I spend most of my lunches on my own no one else takes lunch at the same time or take a lunch break at all so I um, have a nice little catch up on my knitting at lunchtime so that's the second one started I'm almost at the point where I need to start the heel flap and here are the yarns that I'm using. This is opal. And I think I found the tag. Here it is, opal. Acapulco. I don't know if you can see that at all. But that's that one. And then it's this one. From Regia, Anne and Carlos. I think it's Summer Night or something. It was from the first collection of their yarns. It's Regia. So yes, that's sort of 75% of a pair of socks that I have made. Um, um, work knitting is great. I've only been doing socks, which means that I'm now knitting socks again, which I didn't do for some time. I wish I had that time to knit on other projects, larger projects, so I could finish some of the other things that I'm working on but it's just so convenient to bring a sock along so you know that's that's good sock knitting is good it's great so I started a, a second pair of socks because um I'm sort of at a point where I was doing the heel or something on the other ones that I just showed you and I just needed plain knitting in the round to take to work so I started another pair of socks so I grabbed another skein of commercial sock yarn from my stash and I grabbed a jigsaw heirloom something. The skein looks like this. And I actually buy, I bought this in a D stash, I think, years ago, thinking it was quite light colour so I could over dye it back when I was first starting dyeing and I just wanted to find inexpensive but good quality yarn to dye on. I did over dye some, I think, but I had still have some. So here's um, how that sock is looking. And as you can see, <laughs> maybe, on this sock, I just went for a fish lips kiss heel. I was going to do the stronger heel again, um, but then I thought, no, I'll, I'll do one pair with, just a simple short row heel, hoping that this heirloom yarn will be strong enough for it to withstand some wear. Um, I just enjoy more to knit the socks like this with a short row heel. So I'll do a bit of each. I just didn't feel like I could have two pairs on the go at the same time doing the heel flapping everything. So that's that one. That's I've just transferred it from my nine inch circular to um, Magic Loop because I'm close to doing the toe. I, I'm a little bit off yet, but I sort of put it on these needles so I could try it on my foot. And uh, yeah, I want to finish this before the new work week starts so that I can start the second one and just do the leg this coming week. So that's the sock, sock knitting <laughs> that I have been doing and it's mostly, um, mostly work knitting. I so hope that this video will be okay, that there's enough light and that I'm looking at the correct spot, that you can see things clear, all those things, that you can't hear the rain <laughs> over my voice, all these things. Um, but let's just... I'll just keep going and I'll see later on in editing, I guess. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will be um, okay. 
okay so that was socks in progress and then I have my other projects that you have seen before. Um, what should I start with? Let's start with the shawl. I'm still working on my Sherbet Fish, Fish, Sherbet Fish shawl by Amber O'Brien. I don't know that I have knit a lot on this since I last recorded a video. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> I'm not really a lace knitter, I don't think. It's just not my thing. It's it's um I need things that I can easily pick up and put down and not have to check every time I pick it up where I am in the pattern. And colour work is fine because I can easily see where I am in the pattern, but with lace I find it a little bit harder. I have to look a bit closer to know uh, what's going on. So I like to have a big chunk of time when I'm going to do lace knitting. So this is the Sherbet Fish, Fish, Sherbet Fish shawl that I'm working on. And this I am doing in uh, my hand dyed Australian alpaca and SRS Merino that I had as some special edition yarn for the Big Wool Show earlier this year. This is the lavender colorway, and yes, I'm on the the last lace repeat before the border, so the shawl is triangular like this. And I'm sure this is going to be absolutely beautiful and such a good thing to have in my wardrobe. I do use shawls a lot again. Um, if you haven't sort of been following me you might not know but I've I've in the last six months or over the, over the course of last year I've changed from working in a sort of a technical lab um, science role to doing admin and first I was doing admin in sort of a scientific science environment and now I've moved from that doing admin in a completely different area in a more creative area, which is lovely. And um, moving from working in a lab and wearing a lab coat, I had, back, you know, when I did that, I would wear uh, jeans, sneakers and a woolen jumper. And now that I'm working in admin, I, I dress a little bit differently because I don't have to think about chemical spills and things like that and I'm more sort of front of house person so I need to I don't need to wear very formal wear but um what is it called formal I don't it's not strict business or anything but it's just different from working in a lab anyway with the clothes that I wear now I find that having a shawl is just a really good thing so I, I'm just wearing my shawls every day and I think that this one will be perfect both in the style and in the color so I'm really looking forward to wearing it, but it might be that it will be ready to wear after summer, after the uh, warmer season, ready to wear in autumn. But I'll, I'll knit a bit on that every now and then. Um, and then I have two jumpers that I, <laughs> I am shugging along on. I would love for them to be off the needles and ready, but it's slow going. Um, I'm getting there though. So this first one you've seen so many times, but I'll show you again. This is my Stripes sweater, a pattern by Andrea Maori. And this is, it's going to have this folded in somehow. Uh, so just imagine that folded in. Um, this is neat in, Let's see, how many colors do I have? Nine, I think it's nine colors. So it's the green and eight different colors in the stripes. And they're all my hand dyed merino linen, except for two colorways. This one, which is the dingo dye work, dingo dye work, single ply merino. And this is a finished yarn, single ply merino. 
So these were all leftovers I had from um, other projects that I have made. And I just have in a very um, organized, random way, uh, striped these um, colors so that they never stripe um, the same way twice, if that makes sense. So I wanted it to look really random, but I had to really plan for it to look that way. <laughs> um, so I think on the body, I got each stripe in three times. And when I came to the same point on the sleeves, the sleeves were still quite short. And I could have stopped there and just made it a, a shorter sleeve jumper because it's more of a lightweight jumper, I guess. And I haven't made it a very long one in the body. But I know from experience, um, jumpers that I have knit before, that the ones that have a longer sleeve, I just wear them much more. They're just so much more wearable for many more um, occasions, I guess. Um, so I really like this... Um, shorter smaller lightweight jumper but i do like it with the, with the longer sleeve it doesn't have to be all the way down to my hand it can be a little bit shorter somewhere on my what is this called forearm um, but anyway it was too short when i had the same amount of stripes on the sleeves as i had on the body so then i had to figure out how to very in a very organized manner randomly stripe the colors again on the sleeve so where I think I will, that's where the body stripes finish so I've put these one two three four five stripes in on that sleeve and I'm going to do the same on this sleeve and then try it on again and see what length I have on the sleeves and see if I need to keep going a little bit more. But that's Stripes by Andrea Maori. And I am hoping that my office will be cold enough during summer that I can wear this some days. Because <laughs> I have a feeling it's going to be ready to wear in the, you know, the hottest time of the year. Um, yes, I... It's, it's been really nice to use up some of this leftover yarns. Um, yes, I have skeins are getting smaller and smaller, which is lovely. I really like, the, I've tried it on and I really, really like the fit of the body. So I think that I might even use the pattern again for another fingering weight yarn, but probably not stripe it because the amount of ends that I have to weave in on that jumper is going to be hell quite frankly I'm not a fan of weaving in ends and I don't know why I keep doing it to myself but at least with a jumper that I really would like to wear I have an incentive to get it done it's not like other things that I make like socks that can sit there months and months maybe even years and um, before I get a lot get around to weaving in the ends because I have enough socks in my sock drawer anyway we'll, we'll see how that goes hopefully oh that could be a good thing to do at work actually bring along things that need their ends woven in might do that all right I have two more things to share with you the next one is another jumper and this is what I'm making from my hand spun Tasmanian Merino that I dyed in tops and then spun up some time ago now. And it's been sitting in my stash as very precious skeins. I had 200 grams and um, I've recently decided that I'm, I want to use my stash and I'll just, I'm just going for it just doing it so for this i used the basic increases for the fenmont pullover and but that's that's all i just that's how i made the 
the yoke of it and then I've just kept knitting straight. I'm doing it on, I'm not sure if it's two millimeter needle or probably 2.5 millimeter needles. Looks like that. And I'm going to knit the body. I'm alternating two skeins. So I have this much left of those two original skeins. It doesn't really mean much if you don't know what they looked like before. But this is my third skein and I, that's what I had. Oh, I have a little bit more actually. But my plan is to finish knitting these up on the body and then start sleeves with this. And then I'm, I'm just going to keep all my stitches live and just see um, you know, if I want the body to be shorter and the sleeves longer or the other way around. I'll just see when I try it on. But that's, that's lots of fun to knit because it's just plain knitting in the round. But doing it with hand spun and hand dyed hand spun just is lots of fun it's it has a lot of um i don't know it's interesting it's not just plain <laughs> um the last thing that i wanted to show you that i am currently working on well currently not really it's a project that's on the go it's on the needles it's my garter squish a blanket pattern by Stephen West that I have worked on for a long, 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 long time. And every now and then I pick it up and I do do a bit on it. But I have it right here, so I thought I'd i show you if I can. It's a bit of a beast because it's big and it's heavy. Here it is. I mean, I'm not going to be able to show you all of it. I can't remember how many stitches I cast on. I could easily count them, I guess. But um, what I'm doing is that I'm marling how many? Three, three DK weight yarns together. And my plan was to go to my... Um, my bin of random stash, stash of DK weight, go through the green and blues. Then I was going to move into maybe purple and pinks and then into yellow and orange. I don't know. I thought I'd do some sort of um, transitioning in color, but I just keep adding greens and blues and grays. And it is, what did I, I measured it and it's, I think it's 1.6 meters wide and it's now 1.1 or 1.2 meters tall so I'm going to try to keep on with the same type of colors and just make it as big as I, I can it's like a weighted blanket actually so that's um, another thing that's sitting in a bag and getting a little bit of work done on it sometimes I'm using 15 millimeter needles so this is it's a free pattern by Stephen West I mean it's it's you know it's just a garter stitch, stitch blanket but it is um it has the um, what is it called I cord edging that you need as you go which is makes it nice and and tidy so that's Oh, and with this blanket now, I'm running it low on DK weight, blues and greens and grey. So I've actually started to use some fingering weight as well. And I just have to add more strands because I have some um, skeins from dyeing that were not quite right. And they've just been sitting there. And I keep thinking, well, you know, it's, it's yarn. I can use it. I, it's nothing wrong with it. It's just not perfect for selling in my shop. But it's, you know, something that's perfectly fine for me to use. But it's just sitting there and I thought this blanket could eat some of that up. Which is, you know, that will be really, really good. So that's all those things that are in my project bags. And all the things that I sometimes get a little bit stressed about that I should be working on. 
my my jumpers are not very far from being completed once they're off and the shawl is like everything is has had a lot of of the work done on them already there's not that much left but because there's so many of the projects and yes my time is <laughs> a bit limited it just seems like it takes forever for it to be done so it was really nice to have those small projects the mittens and the headbands um, to use up some wool use some other co colors and feel like I finished something it was great I don't know that I have many more things to talk about this time I haven't been doing any dyeing at all. All I've been focusing on in the past month is packaging and sending off advent calendars and tea and yarn Christmas boxes. And that's now all done, which is a huge relief. I wanted to get them down early because I thought there might be postal delays and things, but it seems like it's been all fine and everyone just received their uh, puzzles really early. Hopefully um, everyone can resist the temptation and just stash away those boxes somewhere until December. Um, there's still quite a bit of, of yarn in my shop. I plan to, I, I sort of, I, well, I, I can't say that I have, done a little bit of dyeing here and there lately not in the last month but before then I did do some skeins here and there and I've just sort of I'm just um piling them up until I have a bit of volume that I can update my shop but there's not a lot that I can update with now so I'm not doing it until maybe I've had had a, a dye day um in the next little while and then I'll do an update in my shop but there is there is still quite a bit of stuff in my shop so um that's just the way it is at the moment i'll do more dyeing for specific events or clubs and and things like that and uh, yes like like i've said before the the business sort of changes and develops with how my life is looking at the moment and that's just what it is right now and it works well at the moment and I'm really starting to feel really excited about hitting the dye pots again and my approach now is to not overthink it at all um, just to have a play and look at it more as um, almost like painting and creating with color just as I go which is just a really nice thing and I, that's how I started and then I think as I had more time and as I looked more at other dyers and you know what's popular and how are you meant to do it you know like what's what how does a, a real dyer operate like when I looked at all those things and try to apply it to my business and to how I do things I guess it took a little bit of that um, enjoyment away of just being able to create and having fun. So that's going to be my <laughs> approach moving forward. I always have a bit of an idea and I have inspiration, but I like to see what happens in the pot and just add layers as I, I go and depending on how things you know turn out I'll choose the next layer um, based on, on what I see in the pot anyway I should probably leave this video now and uh, get it all ready for YouTube thank you again for watching and for spending some time with me I really enjoy these times that I get to sit down and talk about the things that I really enjoy and to share it with all of you. I hope that wherever you are that you're safe and um, happy and looking after yourselves and um, 
I hope to see you soon again. So look after yourselves and your families and friends. And until I see you next time, take care. Bye.